All right, so we're going to get into section eight, which is three dimensional figures. Mm -hmm. Now, you may find that uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit because, as I said, I'm going to kind of figure out what I think are the most applicable. And if I don't want to go through that, set, I'm just going to skip it. So, for instance, uh, I skipped section seven, which was getting into transformations. So, like, if I had a triangle on a coordinate plan, plane and I wanted to rotate it into another quadrant, how would I go about moving those points so that the triangle stayed the same size with the same angles, just in a different area rotated around? I figured you guys wouldn't get much enjoyment out of that. So we went ahead and skipped over that uh, because it'd have to be using the distance formula with a worry about rotations, reflections, all that. So we skipped that and then moved on to the three dimensional figures. All right. So first let's go ahead and define what a polyhedron is. Now, according to the book, it says that it's a solid with all flat surfaces that encloses a single region of space. That's a polyhedron. Uh, I'm gonna kind of clean that up a little bit. We're gonna say there's definitely a solid. I'm gonna say it's a solid made of polygons. So we're going to kind of use our passwords to define this one. A polygon is also is a, a, a multi sided shape. So like triangles, rectangles, pentagons, things like that. And if you were to take those shapes and make a three dimensional shape, a polyhedron is assumed to be solid. Uh, so when you create a polyhedron, you are going to have faces, you're going to have edges, and you're going to have vertices. Uh, so I'm just going to give a quick little definition as to what is a face, what is an edge, and what is a vertex. So if I ever refer to them, you know what I am talking about. Uh, so a face is what we call a side of a polyhedron. So if I had a side that was a triangle or a side that was a square, those are all faces. So a face of a polyhedron would be the two dimensional shape that we see when we look at just one little component. So the face of a cube is a square. The edge of a polyhedron is the line that connects our two dimensional shapes. So if we think of a cube, the side of the cube from corner to corner, that is an edge. So it's going to be the line segments where the faces connect. And then the vertex are going to be the corners of the polyhedron. The book's definition, it's when three or more faces connect, because if you have just two faces, then you just kind of have like a tent. But as soon as you add a third face, they now come to a point or a corner. Uh, so a vertex is going to be a corner of a polyhedron. And so using the knowledge of faces, edges, and vertices, uh, we can start to calculate the value of whether it's the surface area or the volume of our polyhedron.
All right, in our calculations, there are going to be five general polyhedrons that we're going to be using. And so what I'm going to do now is just do a little sketch of each one, label them, and then also give you the surface area and the volume for that shape. Now, before I go to that, I suppose I should define what surface area and volume are so that you know what it is that we're calculating. A surface area is exactly as it says, it's the overall area of the surface of a polyhedron. So it is going to be the sum of all the areas of the faces. So the more faces on a shape, the more areas you have to find, and then we add them all together. So something like a cube, you figure there are six sides to a cube. So you would have to find six different or six areas and add them together. Now a cube has a very specific uh, measurement to it. All the faces are exactly the same. So if you find one face, you just multiply it by six. If we had a rectangular prism, you still have six sides, but you have to figure out which sides have which measurement and how many of them you have. Volume. I've heard two different definitions for volume. One is how much you can into an object, but that actually isn't the real definition of volume. It's how much space an object takes up. So if you were to think about uh, an aquarium and you talk about the volume, you would say, well, how much water can you fill into the tank? That's its volume. And technically what it would be is that the fish tank pretending it's solid, so put a lid on it. And if you were to put it in say the sand, how much space it takes up, that's its volume. Uh, so anyway, it's just the amount of space an object takes up. So we're gonna have formulas for each shape they all have their logical reasonings as to where they came from. Uh, none of them are you going to have to memorize, but we are going to be using at least with the rectangular prism and our pyramid and our triangular prism, things like that. So we're going to draw a shape like this. I start off with just a square and then try to have these two lines. They're going to be equal length at kind of the same slant. And even this third one is going to kind of follow the same slant. And then from there, you draw the backside of the cube. Yeah, and that's another thing that we're going to be um, also exploring is uh, one of my favorite artists. His name is MC Escher. I don't know if people have heard of him. Uh, what he does is that he's kind of like a math artist and he works with optical illusions and impossible images. Uh, kind of like if you have ever seen the uh, example of all these people walking up and down stairs, but they all exist in the same picture. And so he was able to create optical illusions through art. Uh, so we'll be exploring some of those too of how we can create some optical illusions using just our basic geometric figures. Uh, so this shape is our rectangular prism. Now I'm gonna label some of these sides uh, with something that you're familiar with. I'm going to call this the length, this the width, 
and down here is going to be the height. So these are the three dimensions. So if you imagine the length and the width is the front part, the rectangle in front, and then how far back or how far out it goes is going to be um, the height of it. And they're kind of arbitrary because you can just rotate this cube and it could be length times width times height or height times width times length. Those can be arranged. Now for our surface area, I would have to figure out the area of all the faces. Now in a rectangular prism, you're gonna have the top and the bottom faces, and then you're gonna have the four faces on the side. Now, if it was nice and it was a cube, then you wouldn't have to calculate all the area. If it was a rectangle, that means that the top and the bottom may have a different measurement, and then the four sides may have a similar measurement. But just the overall formula for it is that we would have to figure out, well, I would have length times width, and there are technically two of them. So if I did length times width, that would give me area of one rectangle. And then the one on the other side of the shape will be my second one of identical dimensions. And then I'm also going to have two of the width times height. And I'm gonna have two of the length times height. So those are the six sides of a rectangular prism. And to find the surface area, you would wanna find three different areas and double all of them. The volume is length times width times height. So that one you guys have used multiple times before. We can't go on a mass break yet. We will towards the end. Next one we're gonna do is a rectangular prism. So I'm gonna start off with a parallelogram. Make it a little bit better. And now I'm gonna make the top part of my pyramid. So I am going to pick a point uh, where I can focus to and all four lines are now gonna go to this point. So I'm gonna have a side, a side, that was crooked. And then I'm gonna do a dotted one in the back to show that it is behind. So there's gonna be my pyramid. And now with the pyramid, all four sides are triangles. So that means that in each of the pyramids, I'm going to have to give you a right angled height because we need to know the height of the triangles in order to find the area of that face. So in a pyramid, we care about what the base is and we care about the height. Now, a unique thing about a pyramid is that the base is a square. So all pyramids have a square base. So I can assume that this is going to be a base by a base because all the sides would be the same. And so my surface area for a pyramid, I'm going to have one of the faces is base times height. 
I'm sorry, one of the sides, one of the faces, yeah, his base times height, and I have four of them. And then I'm also going to have my base squared because it is a square. Now to clean this up, uh, I'm gonna get rid of that fraction because four times a half is two. So I can also write the surface area as two base times height plus base squared. So if you don't like that fraction, go ahead and just multiply the half and the four together and that just changes it to two base times height. And the volume of a pyramid is one third the base squared times the height. Next up, we'll have our cylinder. The cylinder is when you have two faces that are both circles, and then you obviously have a height to it. So think of like soup cans, those are cylinders. surface area looks like a bit of a doozy. And just to label the two measurements that we would need, the height is how tall the cylinder is, and then the R is the radius of the face of the circle. Now that surface area form may look like a bunch of nonsense, but it's kind of logical how they came up with it. Uh, starting off with the second part, pi r squared is the area of a circle. And since we have two circles, top and bottom, that's why they did two pi r squared. So this second part of the surface area is the area of the top and the bottom of the cylinder. This two pi r h is what forms the base of a cylinder. Now, if you were to use your imagination, think of a cylinder, and if you were to cut it right down the side and open up, what type of shape would you be holding in your hand? It'd be a rectangle. So again, rectangle here, if I were to put it and roll it up, that's what gives me the base of a cylinder. And so I'm claiming that this piece of paper here can be modeled by two pi r h. Now the logic of that is that if this circle or if this rectangle is curved into a circle, the distance around that circle is the circumference, which is two pi r. So that means that when I cut this paper up and I flatten it out, this is still the circumference of my cylinder. Now, if I turn it this way, this is how tall the cylinder was. So that's the height. So the circumference times the height makes a cylinder. So kind of a unique way to break down a cylinder, a, a circular object that's all made of circles, but really it's made of two circles and a rectangle. Uh, so that's where this formula comes from, is that that is just saying the circumference times the height is the rectangle, and this two pi r squared is going to be the top and the bottom circles.
the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So that's saying that whatever the face is, multiply it by its height, and then that's what gives the volume. It's the same thing with like a, rectang or a rectangular prism. It's the face times its height. In fact, that's the same with all prisms. You take the area of the face and multiply it by its height. Like this one, a triangular prism. So a triangular prism is going to have the front and the back of a triangle and the other three sides are going to be quadrilaterals. So they're gonna be rectangles. Much like the pyramid, we would have to have a height of the face. We would need to know the base which is the bottom part of the triangle. And we'd also need to know the length and the width of the rectangles that go around. So the surface area of a triangular prism I have a total of one, two, three, four, five sides, front and back, two sides, and then the bottom. Now the two triangles are going to be half the base times the height and half the base times the height. So I have two of the half the base times the height. And I am going to be rewriting this formula because two times a half is just one. So the fraction will go away again. With the sides, kind of like the, if you imagine like a tent, you have length times width and you have two of those. And then the fifth side is going to be the bottom and it will have the dimensions of the base of the triangle and the length of your rectangular side. So those are the five sides to a triangular prism. And again, to clean it up, you're gonna have base times height plus two length times width plus, oops, that shouldn't have been base times height. That should have been base times width, width, length. Sorry, I wrote the wrong variable. I know. Yeah, <laughs> erase all the notes. The volume is one half the base times the height times the length of the prism. So when we do these problems, the first thing that we're going to do is just figure out what values are we using, give them their appropriate label, then we can use them. And the last shape that I want to talk about, it's the easiest, but also the hardest to draw. Is going to be our sphere. Can't really draw a three dimensional sphere. So what they tend to do in geometry is just kind of show that, uh, trust me, 
this is kind of like the equator that goes around the circle to show that there is some depth of it going around. So that's what that little dotted line means is it's just trying to show you that there's some sort of depth in a two dimensional figure. And the surface area of a sphere is four pi r squared. Again, r is the radius. So if I start in the middle and go out to the edge, that's the only dimension that we have. And then the volume, four thirds pi r cubed. All right, so those are gonna kind of be the five shapes that we're gonna be using. Uh, again, we're gonna have our rectangular prism pyramid, cylinder, triangular prism, and a sphere. These are also five of the shapes that are focused on the SAT. You may have noticed that if you clicked on the, um, the tool button, that it would give you some formulas. And these were the ones, the only one that I don't have that I didn't put on is cone, uh, but I don't plan on using the cone too much or at all for that matter. But it has been requested to have a mask break. So we are gonna take a few moments and uh, let people that wanna go outside take a little mask break. And then when we come back, uh, I'm gonna pick a couple of these and then we can just see an example of how we would do it. And then tomorrow uh, we'll do some practice with these shapes. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. <laughs> All right, so let's try that one triangular prism. So I'm gonna start off with my triangle, the sides, and then there's the backing. So we'll call it a height of, uh, we'll say four, a base of six, a side of five, and a depth of 10. All right, so I now have all the information I need right here. Now the variables we need, we need the base, we need the height, we need the length, and we need the width. Because again, the surface area, we'll look at the formula in a moment, but it was half the base times the height times two. We had the length times the width times two. And then we had the base times the height once. So those are gonna be the five sides. So first of all, the base is going to be six. The height is four. The length or the depth of the triangular prism is 10. And then the width of one of the sides is going to be the slant of one of the triangles. And so I labeled that as five. it again. All right, uh, so that is the formula that we wanna do for the surface area. Uh, so starting off with the area of the face and the back, so the front and the back of my triangular prism, uh, I said it's half the base times the height, but then two of them, so it's really just the base times the height. So the base times the height is going to be six times four, plus two times my length times my width. So that's gonna be the, left side and the right side of my triangle prisms, the top up of a tent, if you will. Uh, so length times width is going to be 10 times five. And the last one is going to be the base, which is six times the width or the, uh, the I'm sorry, the length of my triangular prism, which is 10. So is the base another rectangle? Yes. 
it's just that if it was a um, a platonic solid, then or uh, rather Euclidean solid, that they would be um, three of the identical size. But it, you could have a triangular prism where it's like narrower, so the base would be narrower than the sides of it. And now to just do this math, I would have 24 plus 10 times two or five times two is 10 times 10 is 100 plus 60. So the total area of this triangular prism is going to be 184 square units. And I'm not worried about the units, just the math. That's a whole nother headache. I know, I could see it in your eyes. Now the volume is going to be the area of the face times the length of the triangular prism. So one half the base times the height times the length of it. And since I've already taken the work to label my variables, it's just plugging in. So one half, my base is six, the height is four, the length is 10. Six times four is 24 times 10 is 240. Half of that is 120. So tomorrow we'll go through our different shapes, our different polyhedrons and calculate some surface area and volume. Next week, we're gonna be getting into those, the nets, the foldable, um, two dimensions into three dimensions, measuring them out. We'll find the surface area and the volume of our created shapes. And then once we have that information, you guys are going to be free to try to um, create something with a certain number of shapes, things like that. Uh, it will probably be a group activity because uh, I'm guessing some people will want to work together. All right, so that's kind of our introduction into polyhedrons and surface area and volume and just a little sneak peek as to what we're going to get into. Uh, we're going to stick with polyhedrons for a while uh, because, like I said, we're going to bounce uh, by doing this construction three dimensional things, uh, drawing two dimensional things using our shapes, some optical illusions. Uh, I found an optical illusion that I want to try that it's three dimensional, so you actually create it. And when you look at it one way, it's a cylinder. And when you rotate it and look at it in a different way, it's a square. So yeah, in 2016, it won the optical illusion like award. And uh, the way they presented it is they took, um, it had three, it was uh, six cylinders all together. And he put it down in front of a mirror and its reflection were six rectangular prisms. So it's a pretty cool illusion. I haven't tried it yet. So I'm gonna try making it this weekend, see how it goes. Um, but also like had it that you had um, these shapes that were a little bit apart, but the reflection showed them overlapping too. So uh, anyway, it's the uh, Shuri Gura circle square or something like that. But anyway, that's coming down the line. Uh, so try to make the uh, future lessons a little more um, hands-on and see how that goes for people. All right, so I'm gonna stop the recording now.